Hey guys, my name is Trevor, Foobs or Foobier, whichever you want to call me. I'm starting up this new channel because I love to listen and read some juicy R stories. And since you're here, I'm guessing you're the same as me. I'm planning on starting today with my favorite, and that's R slash Pro Revenge, because who doesn't love hearing some jerk get what's coming to them? I hope you like what you hear today, and uh, if you do, leave a subscribe, hit the bell, you know the whole drill. I'm planning on making this a regular thing, and I'm going to be only reading current stories because I know there's other who read R Slash just like me, and uh, hopefully I give you some stuff that you haven't heard before. So, enough of the introduction, let's get with the stories. The first story we'll hear about is a guy who bosses his roommates around and steals their food, so wait to hear how they get him back. Then we'll hear of a boss who's stealing from their employee's tip and paycheck, so they get her back by banning her from her own store. Finally, we'll hear about a boy who is hit in the head with a chair while at daycare, and how his mother responds. And make sure you stick around to the end for the bonus mystery video. Roommate lacks the will to get up on his own. I see a lot of hot blood revenge stories lately, where huge shit storms get stirred up and someone gets fired or arrested. My story is cold blooded revenge, where a very small and deliberate action makes my victim lose out. My first semester of college, I had a roommate who was a pain in the butt. He made up honor code rules to tell us we weren't allowed to watch movies or listen to music he didn't like, didn't realize food wasn't his, stayed up past curfew with friends being over loud, didn't help clean up the dorm for inspection, and had a consistent holier than thou attitude because of his religion. I'm pretty calm and rarely ever get even, but after a semester of his nonsense, I had no issue with revenge. He was going to study music, but failed the entrance audition to an important class and needed to take an extra two credits in order to get his scholarship. So he joined a social dance class I was taking at 7.45 a.m. every other day. A couple weeks in, he decides to set his alarm for 6.15 a.m., 15 minutes before I get up. My morning habit is very tight. Wake up at 6.30, shower, change, eat, and walk to class, arriving five minutes to spare. His morning habit is allow the alarm to play for five to ten minutes before even turning it off, go back to sleep until I finish showering, and come back into the room, then get up, shower, and leave a few minutes after me, arriving right as class starts. I deal with this for a while, and he even acknowledges that it's probably annoying and, quote, I should turn it off since I don't get up anyways. He doesn't. I figured I could use this habit against him. He was essentially Pavlov, trained to wake up when I came back into the room. So in the last two weeks of the semester, I changed my routine slightly. I would eat before showering, that made it so when I came back into the room just a few minutes before leaving, and with just enough time to walk to class. He, not realizing it was so late, took his shower and arrived at class with only a few minutes left, getting an absent for the day. The dance department has a very strict rule that four unexcused absences is an automatic fail. Roommate doesn't remember this rule, he continues to rely on me coming into the room to wake him up and continues to be absent for the last four days of class. His semester report card gets an F, which is brings his GPA too low to get his scholarship next year. Hope you enjoyed it, I know I did. See in the end, I think the best part about this whole story is that he wasn't taken down by some crazy elaborate scheme getting his wife to find out about some cheating, what have you. No, it was his own procrastination, his own laziness to not get up on his own that ended it for him in the end. So, perfect, perfect story, great ending, and just the best way to take down one of these jerks who makes up honor code rules and tries to control people's lives. Ugh. Good, good on him. I'm glad how that ended. You want to take my money? I will cost you even more and get you banned from your own store. I worked at a coffee chain in Canada. The way this chain worked is that people can buy stores and decide what to sell there, but there are still rules. This place always had a sign out reading, hiring all positions. Red flags from the start, but we go through it. My sis and I get a job there. It's close to home and it's our first job. One of the main things that people would get in trouble for was if we gave people ice water, quotes, free water and a to-go cup. The video from the head office told us to, but anytime he got caught doing this, the owner would take one dollar out of the tip jar. Other things, like if we used more than three washcloths, in quotes, when you serve coffee, there's a lot of spills you go through within the first three hours. 
if we give paper plates to people, even if they were eating in store, giving more than one napkin in a go bag, etc. Anything that cost her money, she would take out of our tips or paychecks. Both are illegal. Well, one night, I hit the breaking point. I'm made to stay one hour late just to clean a station that's not even mine, and I don't get paid the overtime or for that hour at all. I start to do everything I can to cost her money and not get caught. I could shove 30 Timbits in a 20 Timbit box. You order small. Oops, I made it a large. Double cheese and meat for everyone. Boom, your small soup is a large. Anything I could do. I have swift hands from learning magic in school, so the best part, you can't even see me doing this on the cameras. She would watch them and try to find where all the stuff was going, but no, I was slick. I was smart. I was unstoppable. I felt the power and I wanted more. I got other people involved. Every night at 2 a.m., we would throw everything out. I get a new clear bag and put all the baked goods in it and set it by the back door just outside and Oh no! A bunch of kids just ran by and stole $80 worth of baked goods. The owner gets a bonus for good drive through times. Oh no! Someone parked in the drive through and our times are all messed up. I serve my time. I cover my tracks. Snow on license plate of all the friends that help me. Ski masks and winter clothing for people. Magic hands. I did it all. I wanted her to lose money. She's pissed calls us all out about what's happening. She swears and curses at us all in front of the store. I file my two weeks, as does my sister. We quit. We did what we could, but we need to get out. Well, guess what? Customers started filing complaints. Ex-coworkers filed complaints. Undercover investigations were done as to why one location was such a shit show. Now, the owner is banned from her own property and her son has to run it. So now, not only can she not manage her own property, and I'm sure I probably did not cost her that much, but I felt so happy and proud that I was able to take action. So I want to believe this one's true, but it just sounds a little over the top in general. First starting with her doing this illegal holding paychecks and tips, you would think that she would get some sort of legal action against her. And then we followed up with magic hands on camera, no one's able to find out, and snow on the license plate i don't know but if it is true this is definitely one of the cooler stories and i definitely need to look up what a timbit is oh it's a donut hole okay that makes a lot more sense in the context of the story all right moving on boy hit me with chair so my mom almost owned a daycare this story happened when i was six years old but my mom retells it so often that the details are ingrained so I went to a daycare while my mom worked. The daycare had a large playground with a jungle gym, plastic lawn chairs for sitting, a slide, a swing, a sandbox, and a playground. One day, a boy kept sliding down the slide without giving anyone else turns. I decided to take a turn as he reached the bottom. When I reached the bottom of the slide, the boy hit me on the right side of my face with a blue plastic lawn chair. I started crying and ran towards the teacher. The boy kept trying to make me be quiet and pushed me. Now the playground was covered with pebbles and sand, and I was wearing shorts, so I hurt my hands and knees. I already could barely see, and this made me cry louder. A daycare worker came over to me, admonished the boy, and cleaned up my hands and knees. I actually had bloody scrapes on my knees that needed bandages, my cuts and bruises were on my right cheek, and my right eye wouldn't open properly. All of this was important to what happened next. My mom picked me up the same time as most parents, when she saw my bandages and injured eye, she got out of the car, stormed into the daycare, and demanded to speak to the staff. She was yelling on the top of her lungs to find out who was responsible, what happened, and why she wasn't called about my injuries. The boy, we'll call Kyle, and his mom were at the daycare. I told my mom that Kyle hit me with a chair. Mom, who is Kyle? I pointed at Kyle, and his mom was getting ready to leave. My mom stormed over, and although I don't remember the exchange between her, staff, and Kyle's mom, my mom made it clear that she would make them pay. My mom took me to the hospital, got photos taken, and called the police at the hospital to make a report and press charges against the daycare. My mom was serving in the U.S. Navy at the time. She had a lawyer the next morning. My mom called the local news and did an interview with me at her side. 
parents started pulling their children soon after. The director of the daycare asked to sit down with my mom a few days later. My mom, her lawyer, and I sat in the office and she made her terms clear. The daycare could pay for my injuries out of court or the local news could come cover the trial as they went to court. They settled for an amount that my mom refuses to disclose. My optometrist says to this day that my right eye is smaller than my left eye and that my right eye has way worse vision. But the daycare closed the year after I got injured. So I feel like the daycare really got off easy here. I mean, if you think about what happened to that kid, he got hit in the side of the head with a chair and what they just rub some dirt on it, get back at it, kid. They didn't call any doctors. They didn't call the parents. They just put some bandages on it and you'll be okay. That's just ridiculous to me. You never know what could have happened. He could have had brain swelling. He could have had a concussion and you know, he'll be fine. He'll sleep it off. Uh, that, that just frustrates me so much that they were that ignorant about the child's safety. And I really wish that mother would have taken him to court. I feel like she could have gotten so much more out of it. Hey guys, thanks for sticking it through to the end of r slash pro revenge, the first episode. Um, so what I plan on doing starting now and moving into the future is going to be bonus clips, either be it a bonus short story or a bonus picture from another r slash genre. Um, today is going to be choosing beggars, although how we do this going into the future, whether or not you'd like me to continue to pick or randomize system or you guys pick the video prior, um, just let me know in the comments below what you think would be the best solution going forward. But for now, let's uh, get started into this last little bonus section. Good morning. I saw your ad on CL for the MacBook Pro. Do you still have? Hi, good morning. Yes, I do. We're actually selling two. Which one were you looking for? The silver one. Oh, okay. They're both silver though. Was it the 13 inch or the 15 inch? 15, MacBook Pro. Okay, yeah. That's a late 2017, basically in new condition. I have work computers, so I rarely used it. Were you interested or do you have any questions? What's your bottom dollar? Well, it's top the line Mac and the largest size they make and every specs maxed out. Processor, RAM, storage. It's still the current model being sold and it's in like new condition. It was 13K brand new. So I feel like 18K I put in the ad is a pretty good deal. To be honest, that's kind of a ripoff. I have a nephew in a huge company and he said not to pay more than 900 for a laptop. Okay, it's no sweat man, I understand. Hope you have a great day. I'm not a man. Oh, my apologies. No, for real though, you will take E900. As long as it brings its friends the other 900 I'm asking for, lol. Friends? Question mark? It was a joke. Sorry, I won't take 900. 18 is my sticking point. You're being a prick. 950. No, I'm sorry. I won't take less than 1800 And I'm sorry you think I'm being a prick. But when it comes to actually being a prick, you have no idea how high I can fly. WTF. F you, dude. I'm not a dude. I'm a man. F you, asswipe. F off. I will gladly F off. But before I do, I would like to say that I've sold many things on Craigslist. And this is by far the most bizarre interaction I've ever had. From generally cordial greeting to confusion, to outright hostility. And it's not even the lowballing. I've been lowballed plenty. If there's anything you could take away from this, I would like to say that you think long and hard before you take your monosyllabic mouth breathing to anyone else in an effort to purchase valuable goods for far below their mouth market value. You absolute clunk in the mechanics of humanity. I'm gonna F off now, but you have a good one, man. What an absolute legend that guy was, saving up all his frustration to the final punch at the end. Ooh, it's, it's so sweet. Also, I like to appreciate the da 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 douche That does not go unnoticed. And uh, before you guys start complaining at me in the comment section, I looked it up. It's monosyllabic, not monosyllabic. So, sorry about that. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for the video. I'll see you in the next one. It's probably going to be an r slash choosing beggars. So, we'll see you then. Peace out.